There's nothing worse than thick viscosity resin. It sucks to mix, it's not very fun to pour. Overall, it's kind of a pain. Luckily, there's a pretty simple way around this uh, to make things a little bit better. And all you gotta do is heat it up. In the past, people have recommended, you know, put it in a hot pot of water and, and it'll thin it out. And, you know, I never liked that method because one, I don't really like water around resin in the first place, but two, you're putting it in a warm pot of water that especially if it's cooler in your shop or wherever you're at, it's just gonna cool off and you gotta reheat it or have like a hot pot under there. I don't like those, those options. So I found a better way to do this. Um, this is a reptile heating pad. And basically these things were meant for like this exact, you know, thing. You plug it in the wall, it's got a dial on it and you can dial in the, the temperature that you want. And all you do is put these jugs on and walk away and they magically warm up. Now it's gonna take a little while to get this thing, you know, heated up to the point where it's gonna, you know, especially heat like a full jug of, of resin, like a gallon jug of resin. However, if you do a little bit of, you know, planning ahead, you just, you know, get this stuff ready and then the next day it should be warm enough. Now you're probably gonna have to dial in the right temperature a little bit, play around with the settings to get the, the right temperature for what you want. But it's pretty easy to get this stuff, you know, I mean, I can get this stuff heated up. It's about 68 degrees in my shop right now. No problem, I can get this to like 85, 90 degrees, the resin itself. So you might wanna kinda of play around with things. If you have a smaller jug, it's probably gonna get hotter uh, and, and also probably be a little quicker. So you'll have to kinda of watch what you're doing with the temperature of your heating pad. But, you know, these things were meant to go under reptile tanks. So they're meant to have things sitting on them. They're safe, they're super cheap. Um, I got two of these things this size for like 15 bucks on Amazon. So I got links to these uh, in the description below if it's something that you think might be kind of helpful for you. But it, I just, I wanted to share this because I think it's like the easiest way to go for you know trying to heat up liquids or anything like that. Um, and there could be other uses that you could use these pads for in your shop. Um, one thing to think of is uh, you know under your pressure pots, if, you, uh, if you're casting really small amounts of resin, um, getting the pressure pot a little bit warmer uh, may help kind of, you know, help along that curing process for your resin. And I mean, anytime you can warm up the resin while it's in the pressure pot or while it's curing, it's going to be a good thing. Resins like warmer temperatures. They're going to cure a little faster, cure a little better usually. Um, so it's not a bad way to go. I actually have some smaller heating pads under these pressure pots. They fit perfectly under there. And I can get, you know, it's 68 degrees in my shop, <clears throat> ambient temperature. Um, but inside, or, you know, like at the bottom of my pressure pot, it's like 80 degrees uh, with those things going. So anyway, I thought it was a, a pretty cool thing. I wanted to share this with you. Hopefully it'll help out if you are dealing with thick resin. Uh, and if you're working in colder temperatures, I also have another video that might be helpful for you. It just covers some things to think about, to know if you're trying to, you know, do resin casting in colder temperatures and ways to deal with that. So there's links on the screen up in the, the top of the screen here and as well as down in the description. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching this video and happy casting.